Today, we're going to oak some tequila. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I have my delightful 1800 Detroit Lions edition tequila. This is a Blanco, so not aged and not put in barrels or anything like that. So no color to it and none of that oaky smokiness. Now, tequila can come like this. I know that with bourbon and scotch, those are typically something that you will age or oak in a barrel and you will get that color, that caramelly dark color to it. And I like it. I like that oakiness and smokiness. They should just write it smokiness like S-M-O-A-K. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not a comedy channel, people. So, one of the things that I thought I would do with this, because I bought several bottles of this, is I thought I might take this bottle here and take one of these charred oak spirals and throw it in here and i think it'll take about six weeks for it to do its thing i'll have to put it in a bigger bottle because the spiral is actually far too large to fit into this bottle and just see what it does see if i enjoy the product after the oaking better than i enjoy it before the oaking let's give it a shot all right so what i want to do here is oak not really age because i don't think we're going to age it very much but this is tequila, and instead of having this uh, Blanco, what do they call it? Añejo, maybe? But we're gonna kind of fake it with this. I picked this up from Barrel Mill. These are oak spirals. This one is an American oak, <laughs> made right here in the USA, light toast. And you can see here that they almost look naked wood. They don't even look like they're toasted, but they're kind of falling apart. Now, the funny thing is I've ordered spirals like this before, kind of like this, but they were very small, like a half a cigar. These things are like two cigar <laughs> sizes. I mean, so they are much bigger now than I expected them to be. And in fact, what they say here is that one stick is good to treat three gallons. I do not have three gallons. I only have a quart here, about a liter. So what I'm gonna do here, as it says, you can break them in half. I'm gonna go ahead and break it in half. I'm gonna put it in this one quart jar here with half a stick. And we are going to wait the six weeks and see what happens. So let's get to it. So I think I'm strong enough to break this. Oh, there we go. Smaller and longer end there. And I'm gonna put the longer end in, which is exactly the opposite of what Subway does to me when they cut the foot long bread in half. They always give me that shorter half. And then I'm going to take my tequila, tequila, tequila here, and just go ahead and pour it in here and let that wood soak into it. Oh, look at that. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Hopefully, it's enough to cover it up. The short, small spirals that they used to have used to be almost small enough to fit through the neck of most of the whiskey or tequila bottles and just age in the bottle itself, but no more. I guess they are saying like, oh, everyone that's doing it is doing big quantities of this. I'm just gonna leave a little of the original tequila in the bottle here because I wanna do a little taste test once we're done between the original tequila and this aged tequila. So now I have scanning jar top, so that should create a nice airtight seal, tighten that up like that. And now what we have here is that spiral sitting in that tequila, and we are going to wait six months. No, we are gonna wait six weeks and come back and see what it's done. All right, one thing I wanna show you here is that it's only been about 24 hours later. It's not even quite 24 hours. And I want to show you that I put in my cabinet here to age and look how dark that is. I mean, that is more golden than, hey, this old fashioned whiskey cocktail right there and many of the other whiskeys. So 80-20 rule here, first part of the oaking process is going to yield a lot of results. I'm really curious if it tastes like it's got that oak and that smokiness in it already, but hopefully maybe more time will get out the last of the spiral and just kind of mellow it out a little bit. But dude, 24 hours later, I think some people might be tempted to just pull that out and drink it like it is. And I would not blame you for that because I totally can see that. that that's actually pretty amazing. Pretty cool. All right, only six more weeks to go. All right, it says that it takes six weeks for the oak spiral to do its magic, but I'm going to cut this a little short. We are on day 10, going into day 11, because it's the evening here. And I just want to show you that this is so dark, it looks like maple syrup. Now, 
Is this so dark that I would be suspicious of it if I were to drink it? No. In fact, when I was holding this up to some of my other whiskeys, you know, and I know this is a tequila, but there are many whiskeys that I have that are darker than this, redder than this, browner than this, just more opaque in general. And so it's certainly not the darkest thing I've ever seen. Now, if I were to compare this to some of the Anejo or Reposado tequilas that I've seen, it's much darker. You know, those tend to look a little bit like apple juice, kind of a little lighter in the brown color. But I thought at 10 days, man, I don't know how much darker it's going to get. It may not get much darker, but it got so dark so quickly, as I showed you, even after the first day, it was pretty dark. I thought I would give it a shot here and just see what it's like and see if we can just stop the oaking process. And now, as promised, I do have a little swig of the original tequila in here. So I'm going to unscrew that and pour that into this glass. All right, so I've got some of that. Nothing's gonna go to waste here. I'm gonna finish them both. And then we will take a little bit of the new stuff with that uh, medium toast oak and feel like I'm opening up a can of moonshine here. Ooh, strong. Still has that alcohol in there. But I tell you what, it smells a whole lot more like a whiskey to me than it did as a tequila. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a splash of that in there and even just a little bit of this in both of these. You can see, obviously clear and, you know, like a bourbon. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is try the original 1800. Now it's been a couple weeks since I checked this out, but again, green olive smell to me, doesn't smell overly pungent, it smells kind of fruity and appetizing actually. Definitely feel that alcohol, kind of that alcoholic burn that you would expect on the back end, kind of deep in the throat, and again, to me, it's pretty clean, it's pretty crisp. It's not like a cheap alcohol at all, you know? I've had a lot of pop-off in my days, and it just feels pretty drinkable, you know? Maybe a little bit more mellow than I would expect a tequila to taste. I feel like when you take tequila shots, you're like, oh man, ah, that's so rough. But something like that would just be warming, but very smooth. Now, let's go on to the oat tequila here, and. All right, I wanna say maybe I can still detect that green olive smell to it, but a lot of that is gone a little bit. It definitely has a little bit more of that smoky smell to it, but maybe now we have different flavors that are muddled together a little bit. So now let's give this a little taste test here. All right, wow. I feel like that alcoholic warmth from the tip of my tongue all the way to the back of my throat, but it's spread out over my mouth, I feel a little bit more. I'm not sure why that is. I think it's kind of mellowed out that punch you get on the back end and it's just a little bit more mellow across the board. Uh, it's a little creamier, more caramelly, maybe a little woodsy or a little smoky, but to me, it just has like a much smoother and a richer taste. Now, taste and preference, that's all gonna be very personal, but to me, this was not bad. And if I were going to drink a tequila, and like I said, I'm not a huge tequila guy, there's nothing wrong with this. It feels clean and delightful and maybe what you would expect a good tequila to taste like. But this is so much more like a whiskey. To me, the flavor dimension is so much deeper and it's really kind of cut off that edge. Like I said, I get that alcohol warmth all over my mouth, but it doesn't really punch me at the back end or kind of punch me on the front end, right? It's just kind of smooth. I would say that if you are a whiskey drinker, this is going to feel very smooth and very familiar. But if you're not like a hard alcohol drinker, even something like this is just gonna be a lot easier to kind of wade into. Oh man, I'll tell you what, this is delicious. And all it took was this, you know, $12 spiral here. And despite the fact that one of these giant spirals is supposed to treat up to like three gallons, you could treat up many bottles of this because this half of a spiral here has worked its wonders on 750 milliliters. So I think it's a great way to take maybe an alcohol that you wouldn't normally drink and turn it into an alcohol that you would drink. Or maybe you even have like a cheap whiskey or a bourbon or something that you wanna mellow out and add even more flavor to. Do these spirals work? They are definitely like putting alcohol in a barrel and letting her age. So if you want to age up your whiskey, oak it up, smoke it up, make it a little bit more delectable, I will put a link to these spirals in the description below, Peter Von Panda. Out. 
can we stop more and explore so much deeper?